Today we are working on section 1.8. In the first part of this section, we're dealing with exponents. On your note sheet, you see 10 to the third. 10 is called the base. 3 is called the exponent. The exponent tells you how many times the base is used in multiplication. For example, in this problem, you see 10 to the third. My exponent is 3. So that means I'm going to use a 10 one, two, three times. Since my exponent was three, I used three tens. So 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. And that's your basic concept behind exponents. So let's solve some exponential expressions. My first one says evaluate the expressions and the first problem is three to the four. So that means I'm gonna use three one time, two times, three times, four times. So three to the four would actually equal three times three times three times three. You can work these by just multiplying across or you can group them and I actually prefer to group them. So if I say three times three, that's the number nine and three times three in the back is the number nine and so nine times nine would actually be 81. So three to the fourth is 81. You could also just multiply down the line and say three times three is nine. Nine times another three is 27. 27 times another three is 81. These get more difficult when you have negatives involved. So our next problem is negative two to the fifth. So that means I'm gonna take a negative two one time, two times, three times, four times, and five times. I learned from an earlier lesson that five negative signs would make a negative answer. You could also deal with your negative sign as you went across. It's up to you. Working this one out, I see that negative two times negative two is four. If I grouped them, negative two times negative two here would be four. And bringing down the negative two, Grouping them again another time, I would get four times four is 16. And 16 times negative two would give me a negative 32. Again, the difficult problem with exponents would be the signs. So let's analyze these, these next two. You have negative five in parentheses to the second, and you also have a negative of five to the second without parentheses. The parentheses mean you take the sign with it. So this would be a negative five used two times. Negative five times negative five. Two negatives here would make a positive and this answer would be a positive 25. But in the second example, you see that there's not a negative. I'm sorry, let me say that again. In the second example, negative five to the second, you see that there's not parentheses. So that means you take the negative sign, it does not go two times. The five is what goes two times. So you'd have negative of five times five. That would be a negative of 25. The negative sign is not in parentheses, so all you do with that negative sign is bring it in front, and then you can take care of the squared part, which would just be five times five. Okay, in the last one, seven times seven is what you would get, and it's just 49. That one was pretty easy. At this point, they put exponents in the variable terms. So they say simplify the exponential expressions. And our first problem is 14x cubed plus 3x cubed. So what we're going to do with that is add them up. 14 plus 3 would give me 17. And we keep the variable term. So that's 17x to the third. Notice I did not get an x to the sixth. You do not change the exponent. Basically here I'm saying I have 14 x cubes and I have 3 x cubes, so how many x cubes do I have? And that would be 17. 
In my next problem, I see 10x plus 2x. So that would give me a 12x. In my next problem, I have 3x squared plus 5x cubed. And those are not like terms. Since they are not like terms, you cannot simplify. Okay, this concludes the first video from section 1.8.